the, the comedy castle was just a, a ripoff of an idea that I um, saw at the comedy store in the improv in, in Los Angeles back in 1978. And I was out there after graduated from college and was going to USC to try and get into the assistant director's program out there. And while I was there, I would go to the comedy store every night. And so right in the very beginning, I got to see Richard Pryor. Uh, David Letterman had just moved out there. Jimmy J.J. Walker was the big name. Um, you know, Richard Lewis. You'd see all these these great comedy names. And so I kept going back and going back and, and watching these shows every night and then running down to the improv and seeing the shows there. So when I came back to Detroit um, and I went to work for the uh, Stagehands Union and that kind of burned me out and worked as a waiter. I still had the the, the idea of wanting a, a comedy club in Detroit. So with the help of people like Dick Purton and Bob Talbert and J.P. McCarthy uh, in the media, they kind of gathered up through my the interviews with them nine local people who aspired to be comedians and then and, and, uh, I found a restaurant that said let's do it because I have this space in the bottom of the restaurant and that was the meeting place and we opened in January of 79 with nine comedians uh, among Dave Coulier was one of the early ones and Tim Allen started about a month later so that's about as, you know, what we started with. And how many locations have you? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's funny, you're here, I'm here at this location for 20 years, but for the first 11, I was in six different locations. So as I tell people, it was sort of like I wandered around from location to location as if I was in the witness protection program. <laughs> it's like, where, where am I going to be next year? But it was, you know, I mean, I had, I was renting sound equipment for $25 a week from a friend and you know you, you you outgrow one location move to another one get in a fist fight with the owner of that restaurant because he wants to take it away from you he thinks you know I can do this without you and we're not we're on the floor beating each other up move down the street that's too small and you know you just keep looking and looking so the six locations led to uh, actually five locations led to a partnership and those partners are no longer involved and um, it's been mine since September of 2009. And who are some of the early comics and how did you find them or how did they find you? You know I was real lucky with the timing because the the very first headliner was Mike Binder who you know Mind of the Married Man on HBO, um, Rain Over Me, I mean The Upside of Anger, you know, Mike's a very well-known director writer now so he contacted me and came down at that time to the meeting place and, and we didn't take reservations. But Bob Talbert wrote a nice column about Mike saying that Kid Comedy was coming back to perform in his hometown. We had a 90 seat room and over 500 people showed up in the pouring rain to get in. And a lot of them were pissed. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, Mike went back to Los Angeles, and again, it's just a matter of good timing. The TV show Make Me Laugh was just coming on air at that time. It started, and it was on five nights a week here on Channel 50. So he's telling Bob Saget, Gary Shanling, Kip Adada, Bruce Baum about this club that's in his hometown. So they all started calling me, and not, I mean, literally, they started calling me, except for one of their representatives, I think it was uh, it was Brad Gray, who's now the head of Paramount Pictures. He was a young agent at the time, and he booked a couple of the comedians, but, you know, I was getting most of them to come in for 400 bucks. I think the airfare was about the same, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and they were coming in for four nights at that time, so you get $400 for four nights, it was a good deal. Was that when Brad Gray was with Bernie Brillstein? Before. Before. Brad was on his own. Brad, uh... Brad used to run, he was a manager of a bar in Buffalo, and they decided to do a comedy night, and he loved comedy, and uh, I think Fred, Dr Fred Draker and Bob Saget and one other comedian did a comedy night, and he decided right then and there, I want to be, a, uh, I want to handle these guys, so he went to Los Angeles and kind of climbed the ranks that way. And now the head of Paramount, Paramount. Pictures. Yeah, Paramount Pictures, yep, He'd been, yeah, he, he did quite well for himself, so... <laughs> There were a lot of, you know, a lot of good, good comedians uh, early on. I was real lucky. Like I said, they were they were plugging 
Comedy Castle, their appearance Comedy Castle, almost every week we would get a plug. So I might not be in the same location, but they were plugging me on, you know, on the TV show. So it was very fortunate. Who are some of the other, um, the bigger names, the celebrity names that uh, have worked here? Uh, let's see, early on it was Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Jay Leno, Gallagher, um, Paul Reiser, um, I'm trying to think. John Stewart. John Stewart was in, in the mid 80s, um, Ellen DeGeneres, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, Jim Carrey, Drew Carey. Kevin James, just about anybody that you know got a sitcom in the 80s and 90s had, had to climb the comedy ladder, and they, you know, they came through here. And when was um, the first time that you met Justin Schlegel? At the, uh, the Comedy Idol, was it 2007, six somewhere? There? Yeah, whatever the first one, the Comedy Idol, before it was a comedy festival, and Justin. Justin really stood out. I remember him being, you know, this is somebody that's interesting. He had, for somebody that I didn't know, I thought he had a good, real strong comedy voice, you know, which is what every comedian looks to achieve on stage. Louis Black is, you know, said, once you find your comedy voice, you're on your way. And, and Justin definitely had that. So, decided to bring him in as a headliner. And, uh, just had him again not too long ago and he'll be a regular on the Comedy Castle roster in years to come.